All right. Another episode of Hey Babe coming up right now. This episode, we talk about a documentary that will blow your balls off. off. It's about... Basically about a guy who's standing on the ocean floor and gets untethered from his safety line boat, dude. As a tank with 15 minutes of oxygen in him. Yeah, you, are your balls? Where are your balls? They're not. They're not in my pants. 100. They were blown right. off. They blew through the walls during that conversation, Bubs. And it's a great episode. We'll talk about your abilities of dancing, your whole life of dancing. We talk about wh- wh- why you're afraid to dance, how you dance, where you can dance, why you can't dance. Yeah. We dance through Chrissy's life. You got approached by Dancing with the Stars. This is all on the next episode. All on the next episode. And, and, also- and where do you leave it all off? To you talk about the crazy pool day with the kids. Oh my! The crazy. That's where I leave it all is in the pool with my kids. We'll talk all about that. We also talk about the merch that we have. I mean, look at these T-shirts. This is my favorite T-shirt I've ever seen of any podcast ever. You can get that at salvocanocomedy.com or chrisdcomedy.com. And there's, there's the, the Hey Babe hoodie. There's more of this logo. This is the gold on black. And then, of course, you got the 119, the Hey Babe here, and Kane Tanaka versus Kane Tanaka, everybody. baby. All that merch is out. My comedy special is streaming on Netflix called Special Weshi, July 8th and 9th, Providence, August 17th to the 20th, Brea Improv, September 30th, Chicago Theater, chrisdcomedy.com. How about this one? Tonight, which is ju- June 16th, tonight, Thursday night, is the premiere of the last episode, the last eight episodes of season nine of Jokers. All new and practical Jokers on tonight. Here it Isn't is. Isn't that crazy? And then uh, tomorrow, uh, so the 17th in two days, I'm in Milwaukee at the Pabst. Uh, then the 18th, I'm in Minneapolis at the, is it Pantages? Yeah. Pantages? Yeah. 24th of June, I'm in the Hampton Beach Casino. And then July's a big one. In July, we got Vegas, Phoenix, and Colorado, Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver. Don't be a fake, don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, hey I, I just met, met you, and this, this is crazy, crazy but, but here's my, my number. number, so call, call me, hey, babe. babe. Hey, babe, what's going on? Do you know Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen was the first song that was engineered completely 100% in a lab? They... Scientists made that song with the different notes and inflections and um, music tones to basically match to release more dopamine inside a human brain. They took scientifically what type of songs make people happy, and they made that in a lab. And it uncovered a formula. What the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> oh, baby. I'm sorry, I hit with your hard F up top. Baby. But wait, I, what, what, do you, what do you even mean? How do you know that? Where did you hear that? What are we talking about? So, she, so she's not even, she's getting the credit for it though? She might, she might even be a bot. She, you're telling me this is, oh wait, oh, you, you just read that from there? No, 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 I knew that. And oh, then Pip, Pip, Pip pulled it up. Said scientists mm-hmm. working in a top secret Canadian laboratory uncovered a formula to maximize the addictive qualities of a pop song. In September, the formula was w- leaked by way of a song called Call Me Maybe and performed by a 26-year-old Canadian Idol winner named Carly Rae Jepsen. I have a hard time believing that's real. And many people have duplicated this since. Scientists in a top secret Canadian laboratory? They said they figured out what makes all generations happy from little kids to grant to grandparents and that's why and they use that same formula. You know what you know what formula they used to make you know what you know what song was made by this formula? What? Wet ass pussy. No way, swear to God. <laughs> no, I'm <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, they're two big hits. I would believe I, it. Hey, you know what? Actually, I, I'm kidding, but it, it could be true. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. So when, yeah, you see, when you listen to tunes that move you, your brain releases dopamine, a chemical involved in both motivation that and addiction. I knew. But that, so that's what they did. And you know dancing? You know what dancing is, like from a scientific point of view? Your brain is getting so overstimulated that your body doesn't know what to do, so it just starts moving in rhythmic patterns. Is that really what your it is? Your brain literally is losing its fucking mind. Right, because- And it, it's like, I don't know what to do. I'm so excited right, right, right. That, it, that it moves. Wow. Isn't that wild? That's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about like, like you, don't, you, do, you don't really dance, right? <sighs> I would, let's talk to me. Like, what's, what do you think your skill level is? Ten being you're on, so you think you could dance, mm-hmm. and zero being you're in a wheelchair. It's interesting you say that. The last part, no, because, no offense. It's just that I'm no just offense. Like, you know, a lot of times people in a wheelchair Shout they're injured. They have a broken leg or something like that. They can't get up. Shout I out don't mean like anything you know. Yeah, ominous. Shout out wheelchairs, baby. Shout out wheelchairs. Um, shout out wheelchairs. I love it. I, I got to tell you a story about a wheelchair. Let me ask you this: If you 
in a wheelchair and you get the death penalty, do you just hook the electricity up to the wheelchair or do you move him out and then put him in the electric These chair? These are things I, I think about every night. It's something or that- I never thought about. One of those two. Um, so I would say dancing- when your, body, when your brain's going nuts and can't handle anymore, what does your body do? What my body does is, yeah. it, is it sits right down in a chair because as far as chair, if you want to say dancing seated, I'm one of the best to ever do it. Right. I can chair dance. Yeah, ready? Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me, hey, babe. Wow. You, you even, like that? You had like a little flair at the end, too. That's what I do. So you have confidence seated. Seated? Is it about confidence, or is it just the lower half of your body doesn't have, the dopamine doesn't get to it? Yeah, I, I don't think the dopamine can travel to my legs for some reason, because my legs literally never work. When, when I'm dancing, but the upper part of my body, I can move all day, every day. It's very strange. So when, when you were a young kid and you were at a, at a, at a discotheque or something, right? And, and, and then a girl would take you onto the dance floor. Mm -hmm. What would you end up doing? Did you just let them dance around you? Dance around me, or I try to just move in a very, like, very, very small square grid. Right, right, right. Just right. try to move that. But dancing, I would always ask if a girl wanted to, like, you know, be like, come on, sit on my lap, baby. You know, uh, and then I would dance with her on my lap like that? because I just genuinely, I genuinely, I, I get, I think that I could dance, but I get so worked up mentally so that it, I, I freeze up. Do you not feel confident to dance? I don't feel confident. And is it because you don't know what to, you can't move your body in a way that you feel would rhythmically match what's going on? I think it's because when I was a kid, Somebody said that I dance like Stephen Hawking. Okay. And that bothered me. Okay. I can see how it would. Yeah. Because he doesn't really dance, you know, like. Yeah, because he didn't. He could only control his eyes. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> is, that you, is that what you do on the dance floor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, wow. I think that I can slow dance. I try, I'm very aware of not stepping on a foot, um, but I can't dance. But I, I'll say this. Okay. I think it's less of a problem that a guy can't dance and more of a problem when a woman can't dance. Yeah. I think if a woman can't dance, that's a bigger issue because they're expected to know how to dance. It's true. I, I don't, I don't, I rarely see a woman that's like, oh, I don't dance. I rarely see it. And I rarely see a woman on a dance floor that doesn't really dance well enough. I'll tell you this. We're, God's honest truth. Latina women, my 11 month old Latina daughter has who rhythm. can't walk yeah. can dance better than me. I've seen it. She can I've dance better in, than me. I've seen it in my Latino nieces. They're better than us. They just like they already have a built-in thing. Now I will say I not I don't do it much now, but I am half uh, Latino, mm -hmm. and thus I've been dancing my whole life. Now there are times where I have to get on the dance floor and leave it all out there. You have to. I have to, and have I to. do. I leave it all at on a the dance floor. You're not going to leave it all out there. I One leave of your nieces, it all out there. Fifty percent of the time I'm out there, I leave it there. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. At 50% of the time. It's left. You have to go back and get it. You forgot it. Yeah. The other 50%, I still contribute, but I maybe not, don't leave it all out there. Got when, it. when your body and your heart and your soul and your mind, when you're hearing something and your brain's going nuts and you wish you could leave it all out there and you don't, what happens? How does that make you feel? Because you can't just walk around your whole life not leaving it out there. I feel like a failure. I feel, I think I do get depressed when I don't leave it all out there, when I'm at a dance floor, when I'm at, when I'm at a... Uh, a place where there's music and I'm not dancing, I'm not contributing. Like I went to a concert. I love the 1975. I went to the 1975 concert in November of 2019 at the BB&T Center in Camden, New Jersey. Yeah. And I- Lock your doors. Oh, I locked my doors. Yeah. I sat in my seat the entire time. I might've been the only person out of those 10,000 plus people that didn't get up because I was too scared to dance to the songs that I know and love. Where in my car driving to the concert- Dancing like, like nobody, yeah, literally, I was dancing like I'm a like I'm a Colombian woman. Right, right, yeah. So what? What can't? Why can't you? Did you ever try? Did you ever say this is going to be my moment? Make me or break me. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to leave it out there. Well, you know what happened is too. One time when I, I was like in my early twenties, and one I was out with my friend, his girlfriend, some of his girlfriend's friends, and they like the guy. You know, was like, oh, you don't dance. And I was like, no, I dance. And then he was like, let me see you dance. And then I tried to start to dance. And then they started making fun of me bad. 
like because I couldn't dance at all, and then and then everyone was trying to help me learn how to dance, yeah. and that was de- like demoralizing, embarrassing, whatever. So then I remember that was the same night that we were at this place called Patty McGee's in Long Beach. That was the same night that my friend was dancing with a woman on the dance floor, but she was born a biological male. This is way before those terms even existed. This was. 15 years ago and the Patty McGee's was by the water I and think Long biological Beach. male existed but biological male existed <laughs> but like the terms but he basically like was kissing her neck and noticed she he had an Adam's apple yeah. and he didn't like that he wasn't told that she was born a guy so they got into like a fist fight and the guy the 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 biological male who turned female punched my friend in the face and knocked him over railing and he fell into the Long Island Sound or whatever that is water <laughs> by Patty McGee's what? and that's that that moment, my my friend getting knocked unconscious by a transgender person into water saved me the embarrassment of all these people looking at me while I was dancing. Wow! So that the whole so attention, the transgender community has been a champion of you for fifteen years. I've literally been saved by trans people since two thousand three. That's unbelievable. They've been saving me every year. Wow! They saved they've saved my career in the last two. <laughs> <laughs> so all right so i wonder what a lifetime of because if you don't leave it out there you take it back with you so you go home and you always take yeah. it back with you home you're not leaving it anywhere you know what's something i noticed too and shout out my mom my mom's a great person but shout out my mom and if you're watching it we know that well, we are. know that you are she a lot of times when i carry this with me and i'm trying to be very conscious not do this to my daughters because it was an accident but this is what happens we can only as generations go on we could only, you know, try to be a little bit better for the next gen. My mother would always, you know, when I was a kid, eight, yeah. nine, ten years old, yeah. she'd come in, you know, like say I'd be sitting in the living room or whatever. She'd come in with an outfit on that she was going to wear to work the next day. She'd be like, does this make me look fat? Uh, and I'd say, no, it, it doesn't. Like, you know, you look great. She's like, I feel so fat in this. And then she would like take her, like, um, you know, like I'd hear her like taking the blouse off or whatever and slamming it and be like, you're so fat like that. And then I started to think like that. Then I started to have body shaming issues because in, I was skinny or in shape or whatever, right. but I, I took that with me always. Right. And I didn't start realizing it until I had my daughters where I was like, Oh, don't do that. Even if you feel like a fat piece of shit yeah. asshole, yeah, yeah. do not do that in front of your kids. Cause then she, sure, you're pl- she you're had planning no idea that I was, I was absorbing that. Right. So then because I was absorbing that, then I start to come with body dysmorphia issues or whatever so i want to make sure slam your blouse slam my blouse so that's why i'm all my daughters i'm all i'm talking about the good wolf and the bad wolf i'm saying baby you feed that good wolf yeah you got the bad wolf inside you even if that don't let the bad wolf eat that blouse just about the good wolf let the bad wolf so so i think that's what happened with dancing with me was i was like you know everybody was making fun of my dancing and everyone's saying i was a bad dancer even though inside i did feel like well we bring out a chair and i'll bust your ass in these right, with these right, dancers right, bring right, out right. a chair literally make me paraplegic put me in a wheelchair for life i'll win every dance competition well, in the world that's that's yeah. it's extreme but i'm willing yeah. to go there yeah um you you know so then i've carried it with me so now i'm 37 maybe 38 by the time this episode comes out um oh well, well august no, 26th be, no yeah. i'll still be clearly 37 yeah, yeah. um I'll, but i'll be i'm at the end of the 37th year yeah so of life so i i um um i i now don't dance at all it's not something that i ever want to do i don't now i'm past peer pressure so now i'm like I don't care if I ever learn how to dance. I don't want to learn how to dance. I don't care. You don't have the desire when your song comes on to just kick your heels off and run. As a matter of fact, I didn't tell you this, but it's weird we're talking about this. And I said no. I politely declined. Do you know last week I got asked if I would be willing to consider to be in Dancing with the Stars? Wow. I got asked. I was was in consideration if they even wanted to go that route because of Netflix special, and I said no. And my agent was like, are you sure? It's like a big competition thing like yeah. it, it, it you can be the comedy guy you could be the funny guy it, it would be good for your career i said i'm not in a million years i am not i'd rather do stand-up comedy butt naked right. like literally butt fully butt naked on national television than go on dancing with the stars fully clothed because you be you feel like there's no way you could pull it off you'd be humiliated i don't i'm just at a point in my life there's a lot of things i do want to change there's a lot of things i'm very willing to open myself up to yeah. get embarrassed for like you know, comedy or, or like learning a new thing or being called stupid because I don't know this or that. Dancing, I just have it in. I don't care if I ever learn it. I don't want to learn it. I don't want anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, when there's music, I might put on sound-canceling headphones in public. I just, I'm so against dancing. Do you know dancing. what 
amount of money I would pay to see you on live national television doing a pasta doble? Do you understand how much money I would pay? Do you want me to call a dance with the stars people and say, I'm back in, Sal's going to give me 10 mil? I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me right now. Honestly, we should work something out. We should start a GoFundMe for you. Okay. Just Look, you'll be eliminated in week one. We know this. 100%. But Could you imagine I made it to week two? You, The person who I beat in Dancing with the Stars would have to be the worst dancer of all time. Yeah, well, they've had people on like that can't even move at all. So I would say, honestly, with your fan base, because I, I don't know if they still vote like by tel- like by vote for you by telephone or something like that. Uh, yeah, or I don't text. Know. But like, uh, I think that you would maybe make it to week two or three. But again, a pasta doble. If we can What's a pasta doble? Oh, babe, a pasta doble. Do we know what a pasta doble is? Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's like that bull riding, like, uh, oh, okay. like, you know, like that, that kind of Spanish, very, uh, what's the, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, I don't know what it is, but you know, I don't know how to describe it. A pasta, do- he, pasta put, po- po- he, go- he, he Googled op, apsa citation. Oh, I'm saying a pasta doble, not a pasta doble. A pa- so a pasta is not a word. Yeah. Pasta doble. There it is, babe. Oh, there we go. A pasta doble. The so pasta? this is Latin ballroom dancing. Is yeah, what yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. But it's very like, uh, like uh, you, you have to hold your, your, your chest up, your gait. Like you have to be very proper and stiff. You want to lose weight and get in shape? You start dancing. Oh, tell me about 100% it. Hundred percent, you start dancing. Yeah. You cannot be fat and be dance at this level. They, 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 they practice six to eight hours a day. Six to eight hours a day. Yeah, yeah six to eight hours a day. Now Could imagine, you imagine Chris me doing, doing this? this. This isn't even one like I, you got to you got to see like a a real pasta doble that's like like very uh, uh, fiery. That's what it is. It's a fire in the pasta. Doble. You know what I might do? I might learn a pasta doble and tell no one. Come out a year from now and just invite you guys to a show. At the end, come out a pasta doble all over you. Yeah. Do you know? I mean, honestly, like, they, like that's what it, that's what it's like. Got it. And but, you get to wear those outfits. That's the outfit, babe. Do, are we? Do we need to dress like this on the next day, babe? <laughs> yeah. Do we need to get a pasta doble outfit? Ballroom outfits. Just for and never address it. Never address. Just well, sit down. Yeah. Look at that. Can you imagine you? I know though. Look at that. You know how you know how scary that is to be in front of on national television live in, in that arena there with like a couple of few, like a, a thousand people looking at what you. What would you rather do? Would you rather be on Dancing with the Stars doing a pasta doble or doing comedy butt naked? Probably calm butt. Calm no, butt. No, I would do that. I got I got I got approached a, a, a bit back on to this. To do Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, and I, and you said no? I, I it wasn't a fish. And I, I thought about it because I have a... But you know what? This is totally different. Just because you could dance a little bit on a dance floor doesn't mean you could do a pass. Now, listen, you hear people that do it, that they love it, that, you know... The, you know, they had fun, but they have some background in dancing or they just want to learn it. I think I'm just not motivated yeah. at all to learn it. Yeah. I just... I, I don't... I think that's a good thing about getting older Some sometimes is like where it's like... There's certain things that I definitely need to improve, yeah, hundred percent, and I, I'm willing to try to work on those. I haven't yeah. necessarily put a plan forward yet, but I, I know that I want to do that. Sure. There's certain things where I don't care at all. I just have given up ever caring if I learn that, know that. That's what that's what happens. It's like it's I a don't breath, care. It's actually a breath of fresh air when you get older. Yeah, I just when you're like, like I don't give a shit anymore. I'm good with it. I, yeah. Whatever. Like, where do you leave it all out there? If not dancing, on a comedy stage, probably. Oh, no. Outside, outside com- of comedy. On the comedy stage, not necessarily. Yeah. Where, where, where do you leave it all out? I would say where I really... Leave it out there. No, where, I, where I've just recently learned, you where leave- I am leaving it out there... You leave it there. In the pool with my kids. Yeah. I did not realize this is the first summer we've had a pool. Yes. My daughter was like, Dad, yeah. I cannot believe how crazy you are. Fully... Taking my seven-year-old Launching daughter, her. trying to launch her yeah. from on the concrete, from the shallow end of the pool to the deep end of the pool, where yeah. if I threw her just a little bit further, she would have hit the concrete on the outside of the pool. Jasmine came outside and was like, stop Shut throwing it down. our daughter. And you were like, I'm leaving it out here. I'm like, genuinely, look at, how, look at her smile. Yeah, like, was- she is having the most fun of all time. I was willing. Do you realize that? Chris de Soleil. Memorial Day weekend, I wanted to. I said... I was trying to figure out if we could do it. I was willing to jump from my second floor window into the pool to make my kids laugh. Do you realize that's what you're doing? You're leaving leaving it it all all out your yard. Pool floats. We were doing uh, under uh, underwater diving competitions with the goggles. I was going down no goggles. All day. Um, chicken playing chicken. 
um, um, throwing TT Jerry in the pool on all the floats, swimming competitions, <sighs> you know, let, letting letting people drown me, all Time that of stuff. Your life. Cannonballs. Oh my yeah. God, where the kids are just standing there getting crazy with the cannonballs. You packed a lifetime of pool into a day. I went, I went to the Walgreens on Memorial Day weekend. I shout went out to the Walgreens. Shout out Walgreens. Yeah. I went to the Walgreens and I went to look for a slide. I was willing to take a slide that was meant to be outdoors. I was going to try to position it and tie it to the fence and make a make a, make a, a water slide. They sell, you mean like a traditional slide? Yeah, like like a Fisher Price like slide. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was willing to get my two hundred and forty pound body on that slide and probably break it the first time. Walgreens going down. is I wouldn't go to for a slide if I'm thinking if no. I'm just off the dome. Maybe I'd go to like a. I was taking a, a little a little boogie board that they have, and yeah. I was trying to throw it out, jump on it, and surf on the it. pool that has no waves. Right. Any second, I could have fallen down and crashed my head on the concrete, leaving it all out there. Hey, yeah. Here's how you know I left it all out there with the kids. My daughter, we got in the pool at a child, a seven-year-old child. We get in the pool at noon, 2 p.m., she had enough. She's like, I'm pooped. She, a child had enough. To, I outlasted a seven-year-old. She yeah. was like, I've had enough, Dad. I can't do this. I got to go to sleep for the night. Wake up tomorrow morning. We'll keep having fun. Right. She couldn't handle it. Wow. You I'll leave it all out there in the pool with my kids. I love that. I love yeah, that. I will not leave my kids out there in the pool. Right, right, right. That's a, that's a key. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you something that's been happening to me out of nowhere? What, what would you say, Sal, if I had to ask you, what would you say America's number one at? Meal kits. That's what I'd say too. Well, a meal kit. A meal kit. From where? Hello Fresh is America's number one meal kit. Hola Fresca. Yeah. Hello Fresh. Yeah. America's number one meal kit. I literally, I've been using Hello Fresh weekly since the day we started this podcast. I have boxes of Hello Fresh coming to my house weekly. Yeah. I love the food. I cook it. I. I it's so easy to cook. It's all prepackaged. I, I cook it with the kids. Uh, I can take a load off Jasmine's plate because I know how to do this stuff. The food is fantastic. They got these. I had the. Um, they had these cucumber salad stuffed pita pockets for summer. They were the best thing I've ever eaten, and they're healthy. I know, and you eat a lot of stuff, and you like a lot of stuff, and to, for that to yeah. make it, to, I mean, they have chicken sausage stuffed with peppers, Tuscan spice shrimp. This is they changed the menu a bunch, you know. Yeah. And if you're going away for the summer, you could update your delivery and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination. Yes, and they got Mediterranean recipes that they got fresh fruits, veggies, nuts, olive oils, fiber packed whole grains for nourishing balance. HelloFresh literally, they, whatever type of food you want. They got it, baby. Twenty minute meals, thirty minute meals. Okay, all the ingredients come in. It's cheaper than going to the store. You don't got to leave your house. You can pause anytime. You can switch what you're getting in the mail anytime. It's a no brainer. Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16 and use code HeyBabe16 as in one six for up to sixteen free meals and three free gifts. Uh, again, that's HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe. Uh, 16 and use code HeyBabe16 for up to 16 free meals and get three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's, America's number, number one, one meal kit. kit. Look, we're all adults. You and I are adults, right? Yeah. We're adults. If you want to, I know where you're going with it. If you want to use nicotine responsibly, you want a cleaner, better alternative to nicotine, you got to try Lucy. You took the words out of my mouth, okay? Yeah. Even though we're in June, it's a new year. Why not start it out by, it's a new half year. Why not start it out by switching to a new nicotine product that you can feel good about? I gave this nicotine product to one of my aunts and she loves it. She's thanked me multiple times for it. She's been using the promo code BABE at lucy.co at checkout and she was getting a great discount. But literally this nicotine product, Lucy, is she's told me it's changed her life Look, for the better. You, if you enjoy using nicotine, if it's something that you do, check it out. Uh, check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. They have the gum. They have the pouches. They have the lozenges. They have a bunch of flavors. Yeah. Um, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. 100% Warning. We have to just give you that warning. Uh, and if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co. That's .co. And be sure to use that promo code BABE. Babe. Can I tell you something that's been happening to me out of nowhere? Twitch in my left eye three days ago. Too much coffee. Too much caffeine. I, I haven't been having caffeine. Uh, dry, was, dry eyes, allergies. Okay, time out. Okay, three days ago, I started getting this twitch, and it's like, right? And I'm like, I feel it, and I feel it twitching. I'm wondering if it's visible. And I was told stress. I was told stress. Could be. But I'll tell you another thing that happened starting three days ago. Seasonal allergies that I haven't had in over a decade. 
seasonal allergies. I, I've sneezed in the last three days. I've sneezed 30 times. It started three days ago, the same time as the eye twitch. Do you know what you're talking about or something? It's First of all, I'm, I'm king of season allergies and depression. Yeah. As Chrissy said, you have what you have. I'm telling you what you have. You have eye, your eyes are dry, either from over itching because of the pollen getting in your eye or the pollen actually dries out the eye. What you need is Visine allergy drops. Can't do it. Can't do it. So what you need is allergy drops. Okay. You can't put any drop in your eye? Never in my life has that happened, and it will never happen. You got to start taking Claritin then, or Allegra. Drowsy? Non-drowse. Take the 24-hour one. Yeah. Because those really you give you a nice it, it dose. works. And you know what I do sometimes, and I'm not supposed to do this, and I'm, I don't know if I can get in trouble by the FBI for admitting this. Sometimes okay. I take two 24 hours in a 24-hour span. And I'll what take does two that of them. Do? Does that give you double Just protection for 24? Me with antihistamines. Does it give you double protection for 24 or extended protection for 48? I think it gives you extended protection for. I think it gives you double the protection in 24. And your allergies all day, every year? Like I woke up this morning sneezing, goo coming out of my eye, nose, blowing my nose, bleeding from my nose, full allergies. I take the Claritin medicine by when I woke up at, let's say, 6 a.m. By 6.05, I have the allergy medicine Claritin in my system. 6.45.7, slowly begin to start stop sneezing. Here with you now at 12.04, no. I would have no, never known what was no going on No sign of allergies. Earlier. Four eye drops in each eye, 24-hour Claritin. And you, this is something that you do on the reg? Every day of my life. No. I, I do allergies. I am a 12-month, I'm a 365 allergy. You're kidding me right now. 100%. So what, what are you there, allergic we're to? We're out there. Dander? Uh, dander is a fun word. Dander is a fun word. Um, uh, you know, of course, all the pollen, moss, all that. But yes, dander, uh, cat hair. I was allergic to um, fake plants for a while, but that went away. Um, what? Hair. So, uh, yeah, I was, yeah it's, it's a weird thing. I had a fake plant allergy. Most people have allergies to real plants. My, fakes. Real horticulture. And cats. Yeah. So this, is, this isn't even seasonal. You live with this? I How take you, Claritin 12 you, months a year. Did you check with your doctor that you could take a Claritin 365 days in a row? I never bring it up to him. Maybe. Maybe just. Maybe I should. There's nothing, there's nothing more for you from the doctor than over the counter. I would say every day of my life since I'm maybe 15, without miss, maybe a day or two here, I've taken a Claritin. <gasps> is, that cra is that bad? I would certainly look it up. Can you take Claritin for 20 plus? Can you take allergy medicine for 20 plus years? <laughs> Maybe that's why I Every can't dance. Day? Claritin blocks the action of histamine, a substance in the body that initiates allergic symptoms, itching, sneezing, runny nose, and allergic skin rashes, right? But what happens, Pimpy? Can you say what? Can you take Claritin? Okay to take Claritin every day for years. Well, <sighs> you can take Claritin daily and long term. It's an antihistamine used to treat for allergy symptoms. If your symptoms are year-round, then it is able to be taken long-term. What? I there you go. Uh, yep. What are the long-term effects? Wow. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, my God. Right, this class of drug is associated with psychological side effects such as irritability and anxiety, hallucinations, aggressive behavior, depression, suicidal ideation or behavior, and insomnia. All that so you don't sneeze? Seems like a lot. Yeah, but so you got to understand. Claritin, it, the people at Claritin are asking a lot. When I, when I wake up, though, I mean, swole, like I'm swollen. I'm see, here's, 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 here's the typical night for me. You know, you, you, you know, you're sneezing. You can't take it. You take Claritin, and then you want to maybe kill yourself? Kill myself. You ready for what happened? Let me tell you what, well, let me tell you what, a, what a night in May is for me. Because May is where it's the worst. I get it seasonal, but May. It's going to be May. It's going to be May. In, in New York City, Northeast, May is the worst for a lot of allergy. April, May is the worst. That's why I don't, that's why. So you know how I'm always like, oh, I don't like the heat? Because I associate the heat with sneezing where when it rains, it washes away the pollen. My allergies are almost oh. non-existent when it rains. The day, if it. You're only happy when, when it rains. rains. Remember that song? You want to know what the worst days of my life are? Please. When it rains, listen to me, when it rains, Okay, so everything's there, and then the very next day is a sunny, windy day. Uh, what? Dead. What happens? Because it washed off all the pollen and stuff from the trees. Now it's just sitting there. Now it's sunny, and the wind is oh, whipping it up. Forget it's like it. an allergy tornado. Oh, so the water doesn't wash it away? No. It just, like, knocks it around? No. Nope. Nope. And you're, oh, my God, this is horrific. Let me tell you what a night is for me in May. 
you know, this is what happened. This is, this is, I would say, let's say whatever there is. You learn to live with this. Half of May, this is what I do. I go to sleep. Here's how I sleep. Here's what I do. I Usually I... I take a shower, brush my teeth. Sometimes I don't take a shower, but I always brush my teeth. And you I was a uh, nighttime shower guy or morning shower guy. I go nighttime. I flip flop. I like it at night too. I've noticed we've been on the road before, and you'll take you'll get off the plane. You took a shower that morning. You, we'll get off the plane, hold a travel day. You don't shower before the show. You'll go right into the show because you said I took a shower this morning, even though yeah. I went through di- three different time zones. Yeah, the time zones don't really b- bother me. For me, I take a shower in the morning. Sometimes I'll take I'll take a shower right before, when I get home from the show. For me, I have to take a shower for every time zone I cross. Okay, so if I'm going to New York, tell I got to take three showers. Forget about it. If you go to like India, how many time zones are there? You ready for this? Twelve time zones. What do we think, pimp? How many time zones are there? My guess is twelve. Twenty-four what? times. What? <laughs> Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. 24 hours. Yeah, I guess so. But I didn't think it was 12. like that. 24 time zones. What's the furthest time zone away from? Like, so this time, the f- zones, this time zone's in the middle of the ocean that nobody even cares about. No. Dude, and also, do you realize like, like New Year's Eve, it's like BS because by the time it's New Year's Day for us, it's been New Year's Day in it's Australia. It's been done it. It's been done it. I flew to Australia on November 5th, landed on November 7th. My birthday is November 6th. So you lost. You I had didn't no- celebrate it. I didn't. I didn't have the day of. The, I Did didn't, you go the fifth or the seventh when you celebrated? I celebrated after I got to Australia. <laughs> so the seventh. Yeah, or that week. But the I really didn't pl- feel the. I didn't feel the birthday day. Here we go. The last place on Earth where any date exists is on Howland and Baker Islands in the IDLW time zone, the Western Hemisphere side of the international dateline, and so is the last spot on the globe for any day to exist. Therefore, the day ends when it ends. AOE when it ends on Howland Island. Interesting. So where is Howland Island? Anywhere on earth. End of day. Okay. Can you Google where Howland and Baker Islands? Can you? Oh, uh, right. but I do. You were in the middle. Just so you know, we were in the middle of t- telling me what, uh, what happens to me in May. Yes. So typically at, wow. Look at how remote Howland Island is in Baker. Oh, it's in, it's, it's actually not that far. Oh, it's, it's by, Actually, Howland Island is closer to us than Australia is because they go, you go around the world. Oh, and the U.S. owns it. Too uninhabited. What's an atoll? Yeah, that says Howland Island and Baker Island are two atolls, two assholes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a coral oh, it's reef. it's an atoll. Oh, wow. It's a ring-shaped coral reef. Dude, some of the world is beautiful. Mm. Okay, so what I do, let me tell you. So what I do... Almost every night in May, as I go to sleep, no shirt on, shorts. I wake up in the morning, usually butt naked. Why? I get so sneezy in the middle of the night, tissues aren't enough. I take off my shorts and blow my nose into my shorts. I have no choice but to do that. What are you doing? Why don't you just put tissues by the bed? I go through too many tissues, and you, I have. Who, who, do you, who are you gonna? Who puts up with this? You take off your boxers and just start blowing your nose into your boxes at three thirty in the morning. I'm told just put tissues by the bed. Do you do your laundry? No. And and then what? So you just blowing <laughs> your nose into your boxes, and then where did that? Where does that go? Uh, I put that in the wash and I wash those and then I so when you see a, you might see a pair of my shorts that look like there's just jizz stains all over it. Yeah. It's allergies. It's now. allergies. Okay. I I'm told. I've never heard of this in my life. I'm told. I've been told many 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 times. You don't want to get out of bed. But, okay. Go ahead. I've been told many many times by Jasmine, my girlfriend, my my mother, and my children that she's like if women knew how disgusting you were. Yeah. And and what it really was like living with you. None of these girls would ever put hard eyes on your Instagram pics. None of these girls would ever tell you that you're cute. Right. N- none of this would happen because she said you are by far the most disgusting human being yeah. I've ever been around in my life. I, and I'm know, like, I, why don't you leave then? And she's like, because you cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is disgusting, dude. Yeah. Like I, just a little bit, my opinion changed of you just now. A I little bit. It. And I thought I knew you very, very well. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you're, you're taking off your shorts and you're blowing your nose into your shorts, into my shorts in the middle of the night. And then you're just rolling around with the shorts. And then you, is, is that then your, your tissue for the rest of the evening and, and the sleep? I'll, what I'll do is I'll blow my nose into my shorts. 
And then when I wake up in the morning, and that usually puts me to sleep because I have like a big tissue there that I could just blow into it and I'll blow into all parts of the shorts. And then what I have, and then what I'll do is, and by the way, in the winter time, when these seasonal allergies, once in a while they kick up in the winter, I blow those right into my pajama pants. Flannel. You do. Flannels. Yep. Um, so I'll do that. And then, and then I, um, I, when I wake up in the morning, I'll take those, those shorts and I'll put them in. I'll put now, let me be honest with you. We're just being honest here. Yeah, don't not be honest now. If it's not too bad, if it's not, if there wasn't too much snot, no, come on, bro. I will come put on, on I will put on boxer shorts. You can put them back on? And I'll put them back on and go to the gym with them. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Let me ask you a question. You're it takes effort to take off your pants, take off your shorts, and then start blowing. You know, it's like this not it's not like that crazy for you to get up real quick and go like 10 feet to get a tissue well the thing is is first of all a lot of times i i'll forget to have tissues and i'll have to blow my nose into paper towels and that chafes my nose sure but a nice pair of little lemon shorts don't, don't chafe that is true they're probably five percent rayon they are you okay okay but you live with this so why haven't you ever said let me get some puffs plus with aloe or kleenex put by the bedside and i will stop Blasting my mucus into my own undergarments. Well, I I do I do, but there's a lot of t I will go through on high allergy season, yeah. especially now my my daughter, my oldest daughter has allergies too. We will go through a box of Puffs Plus with aloe in about an hour and a half. We'll blow through it, right? Because they get. I mean, I'm talking about it's nonstop Niagara Falls of allergy snot coming out of my cabin, and that's despite the Claritin. Despite the Claritin. No, if I had oh, no Claritin. If, if I had no Claritin, dude, if I had no Claritin, I would be dead. You would be I would dead. be one of those guys that drops dead of allergies. And Claritin is your go to choice? Claritin is literally my savior. Okay. Claritin, I was taking Claritin D, but now I got high blood pressure, so they said I can't take What's the D. What's D? Claritin decongestant, but the, the stuff, the properties in the decongestant raises your BP. So I can't take Claritin D, but I don't really need Claritin D. Okay. I, 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 oh, that's right. That's why when I take NyQuil, they say it's bad. DayQuil and NyQuil, it's bad. Oh, good. Oh. So, so, yeah, so that's... But I, what I will say, what I will say is I'm not doing it fully, but there's a cafe on Staten Island on Bay Street. It's called Bloom Cafe. Shout out Bloom Cafe. It's an all vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free place. They have other options. Shout but out free. Shout out free. Anything that's free. Like today, I ate a gluten-free, dairy-free devil dog. I wanted to have a devil dog. I had a, now, now listen. Gluten-free, dairy-free. Did it taste good? It tastes awesome. If you want gluten-free, dairy-free stuff, they have vegan cheese, vegan eggs, all that stuff. It's so... The Bloom Cafe on Staten Island has got so good. Is it a vegan cafe? They have all vegan options, but if you want just a regular egg and cheese, they could do that for you. Okay. They, they could do that for you. And it's all nut-free, because I think one of the owner's kids it has a nut allergy, so it's all nut-free place. So that you can't get almond milk, but they could get rice milk. You ever have rice milk? I have. Shout out rice milk. I have. Rice milk is awesome. Shout out different kinds of milks. But what I will say is since I've been eating a little bit of these vegan products, I know people say, oh, just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's not healthy. Right. Yeah, I know. First of all, shut up because it does mean it's healthy, shut stupid up. asshole. Yeah, yeah. I just literally ate a vegan-free, I just ate a dairy-free, gluten-free devil dog. It's the same as eating a salad. It's the same thing. I believe so. 100%. So, so I, I, since I've, I've noticed, since I've been taking, like, I don't drink as much milk, I don't drink as much, I don't eat as much processed foods because when I go to this cafe, it's not processed, it's mm. less allergies. Le and oh, less, sure. and dairy, dairy mess, because it clogs you up, mess with, no dairy in there. Dairy clogs you up. Dairy free. Is that why they say you can't have like milk when you have a cold or something like that? That's what they say because it cl clogs you up. What does milk do to you that it clogs you up when you have a cold? I'll tell Damn. you what, it's not doing your body good. It's not. It right? ain't doing your body good. I don't think, I don't know if milk, I think milk had an ag campaign that made us think that milk was better than milk is. Big milk yeah. is, is a whole corporation. Bad news, Just right? big, yeah, the, the, No? The, yeah, dude. They, what in Hormones? what? In Bubba's. In what world would a human being, a born human baby that, that we saw from Look Who's Talking last week's episode, yeah. a human baby, why would I need to drink cow's milk? It's another animal. I got to suck cow titties now? Right. Wh why? That's big milk because cows were the cheapest animals to milk. So therefore, let's make up a whole campaign about calcium and blah, 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 blah. You don't need it. No. It's all lies. Milk There's rocket fuel good. in the milk. Yeah, that's true. We saw that. You don't need that. So we we grew up on that. But then again, like let's say you get a little bit older. What do you have in your cereal with? You can't do it with titty milk. I'll do it with almond milk. Do a rice milk. 
Oh, but if I'm have a magic spoon, I do it with almond milk. How, how long? How long has almond milk and rice milk been around? Years. Really? Yeah, the Chinese invented it years ago. Really? Hundred percent. All it is is water and like almond. It's not like I don't know why. It's, I don't think. It, yeah. Look, drink was invented as in the 12th century. Back in the 12th what? or 13th century, almond milk was consumed by Islamics and Christians during fasting season. Sorry, Islamics and Christians. Would Islamics plus Christians equals Chinese? Right. Okay. So I have been using Grove uh, in the house before they came on as a sponsor for this podcast. Dude, you've been using so much Grove, I call you Grove of Cleveland. That's that's what you call me, babe. Yeah. You call me Grover. Just don't call me late for dinner. That's what it is. That's what it is. So Grove is basically a website that has all these green, uh, better alternatives for the household Got products it. that you use in your Got house. It. Just a whole slew of them. Did you know that only 9% of plastic actually gets recycled? 9%? That's mind-blowing. No matter how much God. we put in our recycling bin. So at Grove Collaborative, they believe it's time to ditch single-use plastic for good. And that's what I've been doing. You know I don't do bottle. See that? Yeah. Not in my house. No. I, don't, no. I, don't do pl- I haven't done a plastic bottle in over a decade. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm using too much plastic. <laughs> no, it's no really Grove. So Grove carries hundreds of products aimed at replacing single-use plastics across your home and personal care routine. By 2025, Grove will be 100% plastic-free. That soap on the counter there, instead of using liquid soap in the bottle, it's like a bar, and you okay. kind of just rub the sponge on the bar. It stays there, and you're eliminating that plastic. We do it even even the even the products we have like that we use like uh, for for washing dishes and stuff. It's a powder. That we get, and it comes in the same. We fill, refill it in the same plastic. Dude, literally, the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize should be Grove. It should be two million households already shopping sustainably at Grove. If you go to grove.com slash hey babe today, you'll get a free gift set worth up to fifty dollars with your first order. Plus, shipping is fast and free. Get started right now at grove.com slash hey babe. That's grove.com slash hey babe. Babe, you know that I'm a cereal lover, okay? Dude, my I know. F- favorite food, ravioli, peanut butter and jelly, bowl of cereal. That's my that's my dream meals of the day. Okay. Start off with cereal, peanut butter and jelly for lunch, ravioli for dinner. I don't care. That's what it is. That's what it is. And I had to stop eating cereal the way I did when I was a kid. And it's got we, a lot of calories. You know, we talked about this before, but one of the reasons, one of the ways I get cereal back in my life is Magic Spoon. Because Magic Spoon, first of all, it's only 140 calories a serving. Yes. Okay. Sugar it, and carbs slash. And you're keto. It's keto friendly. It's gluten free. It's grain free. It's soy free. It's low carb. The only thing that it's not free of is taste. It's full of taste. That's it right. Tastes so good. My favorite is the peanut butter. I I like that peanut butter Magic Spoon. Is I I eat it with almond milk. I love. I I can eat. Honestly, a box of that one. The sitting. peanut butter is good. I like the fruity, the frosted. I haven't tried the cocoa yet. There's also a blueberry. Look, it's the zero sugars comes with protein in there. Thirteen to fourteen grams of protein. Oh, the cinnamon flavor. The cinnamon is so good. Yeah. Oh my god, the cinnamon is so. You gotta good. love that. I mix the peanut butter and the cinnamon sometimes. You oh, do. I mix the cinnamon and the chocolate magic. Spoon. You you could do that, and or you could order your own. You could order prepackaged or the ones you want Get from the bundle them. pack. The bundle pack of four boxes. It's only four net gar, uh, net carbs each serving. It's so, amazing. This is it. We love it. Try it out. Go to magicspoon.com slash hey babe to grab your delicious cereal and try it today. Be sure to use our promo code hey babe at checkout to save $5 off the order. Uh, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. This is a no brainer. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, Refund your money, no questions asked. Boom, boom, pow. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt free cereal at magicspoon.com slash hey babe and use the code hey babe to save five dollars off. Thank you, thank you, Magic Spoon. <laughs> thank you so much, Magic Spoon. For sponsoring I this want to episode. thank you from the bottom of my Magic Spoon filled heart. Yes. For sponsoring this episode. Bong bong. Um, milk and okay, the problem with milk may be a, a sensory, sensory trick. trick. It's like David Copperfield. Milk and saliva in your mouth create a somewhat thick liquid. Ugh. That can briefly coat I'll the mouth. I'll blow that right into my shorts. <laughs> that can briefly coat the mouth and throat. The sensation that lingers may be mistaken <laughs> for a grease phlegm. Oh my God, Sal's going to puke. If you start saying gross stuff or we look at gross stuff, I, I will dry heave instant without even. So you can't even read the the word phlegm is disgusting. It is so gross, bro. Phlegm and you know what else is disgusting? The word feet. Oh, feet. phlegm and feet. Feet, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Fleming, I literally, I think I'd rather watch a live beheading than listen to the words phlegm and feet. Uh, I'll listen to phlegm and feet on that one, but I will tell you this. I'd rather somebody shit in my mouth <laughs> than listen to the words phlegm and feet. Yeah, again, I'll go with phlegm and feet, even though they're gross. Okay. Um, one time on the show. What would I, you rather do, listen to the words phlegm and feet or wear my booger shorts? Oh, I would listen to phlegm and feet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
zoom in on his face. I can't think of look. At I can't think. <laughs> I can't think of eating your booger shorts. I can't think of, of of doing that. That's that's a hideous thing. I told you, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> so do you crap. lay back in bed with the snot on your pants? No, I'm butt naked. So you, I, you I put them, them on. The, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get naked. I'll feel a sneeze coming on. I get frustrated. I pull my shorts off. I get butt naked. Now I'm butt naked. I blow my nose into she, my shorts. She, and Vinny's in the next to you. She's right next to me. I blow my nose in the shorts. And, and then I put the shorts on the floor. And then as I'm sneezing throughout the night, I quickly pick them up, blow them into the shorts, and then put it down. And she's, Jasmine and Vinny's woken up multiple times in the morning and been like, Chris, you're fucking disgusting. Yeah. I'm not picking those up. I'm not washing them. And then I'll just wait for her to go downstairs and I'll put them in the laundry. Now, do you ever just blow your nose in the sheets? That I've never done. Don't That'd do be it. wildly disrespectful. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That I, I've never blown my nose in the sheets, but it is a good idea. Dude, I can't, you know what's so funny? I blow my nose into my shorts and I've jerked off into my socks so many times. <laughs> I just love I've lining up done, my clothes. I've never even done that. Really? You never jerked yeah, off into your socks? No, what did you jerk I, off I to when I, you were a kid? I don't understand why that's a thing. I never understood it. Well, because it was just the easiest thing to clean. I mean, you know. I, I just never understood. Like, I don't even get how the two come together. Like, like. No pun, but like I don't, I don't get I like like, like why is that even an option versus any garment or just versus a, a regular towel? thing? Yeah, I think because like you know I'm not gonna do that to my clothes. I mean, I would, I literally. There's been many times where I've been playing, like you know, I grew up playing basketball. I was playing basketball defending someone with with cum riddled socks oh from the night Lord, before. Bro. Oh boy, oh yeah. boy. Why don't socks get respect? Socks don't get no respect. respect do you think socks, socks is a thing that'll eventually be like? We don't need that in the future. No, you need socks. No, I'm saying like somebody will make a shoe that's a sock. Like, like, the, like, because we're putting on, it's too many steps. You got to put on a sock and a shoe. Like already they're coming out with shoe socks. I, I saw that. I, I bought them years ago. Like, oh, I'll try this. And they're like, they, they stick, they adhere to the inside of your shoes. And they're like a yeah. sock lining. So that shoe has like a, it's not like sock sock, but it's like, so you don't need socks. Right. And I, I never tried it. What about like an They a, wanted me to cut it out. And I'm like, I'm not going to. What about like a hologram sock? I'm sure it's coming. Holograms in general are coming like holograms. I think over the next ten years, Agreed. like you know, like when the iPod came out, our minds were blown. And now, when you look at an iPod, you're like, oh, look! Remember how old that yeah, thing yeah. is? But it's like happened so quickly because now it's iPhones. And well, like iPhones came quick. Like in 15, iPods are gone, right? Yeah, ten years ago, like to have pictures and videos on your phone, you'd be like, what? That's crazy. Like yeah. it wasn't as advanced, mm -hmm. but now it is. I think holograms are going to come out in a big, big, big way. I think so as well. Isn't aren't people investing in that? Yeah, um, um, there's a hologram company right now that Howie Mandel owns that is literally you can put a hologram, oh, like you can book a speaker or a singer or a comedian at a, from New York and have them in Hong Kong yeah, on yeah, a hologram, yeah, yeah. and they literally are interacting. Who tell me like this. you could have, we could have a guest on via hologram, right? All we would need. Is a is a piece is a, is a, a box as as big as pimps smallest camera that would hologram them on here and they're in a big machine back where they are like a box and we are interacting and they're with like them, and they they're right on, here with us they got on VR so when they look at us they're, they're looking they're here at, so when this hologram looks at me they're turning and looking at me and the camera you know how sometimes it's hard for us to get our schedules together with both doing a million yes. things. There's going to be a time. Actually, we could probably already make it happen if we wanted to invest in the hologram machine where we could just, if you and I both just had access to the hologram machines, only pimp or somebody would need to, maybe not even pimp, somebody would need to be here just set up the camera and we could do an entire podcast without being there. And I think that that is going to be the way of the future. I think that's just what it's going to be most. You actually don't even need any of us. There's AI that creates art. So there's AIs that can write your jokes. There's computer technology that can just Nobody map can write my you. jokes but me. That's dude. Can that's the future. For better or for worse, dude. That's the future. It's coming. Camera guys, everyone's out. Robots are in. You know what just we need to buy? You just mentioned AI art writing comedy. Oh yeah, they're they're programming it. No, you know what we need to do? You mentioned art. That's what all the all the money is at. All the billionaires they're investing in art. They're investing in in grain, metals like like hard objects, grains, metals. I don't know about gold, but I know grains and metals are big ones. And art. They are buying so much art. It's you mean insane. traditional art? Traditional art, NFTs. Why? There's some type so of so easy to hide in laundry money. Yeah, and it's and it's just like it's all um, I I don't know the word to describe, it, but it's all like made up value. It's like 
Sure. You say it's a hundred million inflated. Inflated. So right. So I buy it and now. I'm like, well, I've had it for ten years. Now it's ten years old. It's two hundred million. Okay, two hundred million. Yeah, but I don't know if that's because I, I I spoke to my insurance company about my sneakers. Mm-hmm. And like from what I bought them for, and then if they get stolen, what they're worth now? Allstate? What are you going with? I I don't know. Whatever they are, I don't fucking know. Gray Gray Goose. Yeah. So and they said to me that you'd have to have that sale, otherwise they have to go buy the receipts. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense because they appreciate like art sneakers. Yeah. Still, so I bought a thousand dollar pair of shoes that are now five thousand dollars. Right. Right. So if that gets stolen from me or destroyed in some way, you got to give me the five. 100%. Right, and they're like, well, what did you buy it for? That's what we got to give you. I'm like, no, it, I have to educate them that it appreciates like appreciate. art. And then like, well, you got to show, I guess you got to just show sales of that that item for that amount of money. Interesting. Yeah, no. Do you see, have any art? No, I got to get art. I got to get art. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I got to get art. I got to get art and I got to get watches. <laughs> yeah. Buy, yeah. I mean, you could buy art for investing or you could buy it for, you know, love. No, like, I, the pieces, the different reasons. Because like, I just started getting into it a couple of years ago. Only I started to say I want to make invest. I want to buy. In, I want to find both. I want to find something that I really like, but that also is a, is a good investment. But that's what a watch is. If you don't, if you buy certain watches, they appreciate in value like insane. Yeah. If you, as long as you don't put diamonds on them or mess them up, yeah. you can keep that, and then it just appreciates in value. But the art's tough because you're investing in the lifestyle. The I've been friends with real famous artists, and all the ones you want to invest in, you can think they die any day, right? Isn't that kind of the game? You, you invest in crazy artists that might drop dead. Like, like if you have a piece uh, of Banksy, if you have a piece of Banksy art right now, you bought it for a hundred grand and he drops dead tomorrow and his name finally gets revealed, that's going to be worth a million bucks immediately. Yeah, but we don't know his lifestyle. You want an artist who's like a drunk mess. Mm. That's why like Picasso and Van Gogh, That yeah. But if you had a Van Gogh when Van Gogh was alive, it wasn't worth dog shit. No. That's how crazy that Van Gogh has no idea how famous he was. He, he yeah. is. He has no clue. He died. Nobody knew who the hell Van but Gogh was. But maybe that's why he's a genius. Maybe that's the way to do it. I tried to buy a, a Picasso sketch. And I also tried to buy a Basquiat uh, sketch. And what happened with either one? It was a, li- it was a, bit, a bit too much money too pricey. for what it was. Uh, I don't know. What happens? What do you think? What do you really think? Sal James Volcano. Maybe it wasn't a Picasso. Maybe it was a little, but the, the, it was a boss cap. But, but please continue. What do you think, truthfully? Yeah. Truthfully, when you die, what happens? You're going to put me here now? <laughs> this is what I go to therapy for every friggin' week. Better help? I know, but yeah, but you got to put me here. That's what the podcast is sponsored by. I'm afraid that nothing happens. You, you're more afraid that nothing happens. Yeah. You, so in other words, if nothing happened, you that would like if you went into nothingness, that would scare you more than like going to hell. I don't Do you believe in heaven and hell? No, that's man made. Yeah, you believe your energy has to go somewhere though. Um, does it just dissipate? I don't know. Like I, I feel like I just feel like it might just be the end. Might just be the end. Yeah. Well, let me tell you. I want to feel spiritual. I want to think my energy goes somewhere. I want to think there's some type of cognizance or or something, something after. But uh, odds are, I mean, we don't have any, we don't have any uh, proof of that. You have to all these years. Right. It's just hearsay. Your energy has to go somewhere, though. You think so? It has to. It's too much energy. That your vessel has to go somewhere. But your energy. I think that's what your, your soul is stopping. Yeah, but I think that's what your soul is, is your energy continuing. I think that's what it is. I think you. this is like a... Just me- let your just soul glow. Girl. Just let it shine through. Just let your soul glow, baby. Feeling all so silky smooth. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Beep. Let me tell you something right now. Let me... Sal, I, let me... Change something Ooh, right now. This is going to be good. I watched yeah. a documentary on Netflix called The Last Breath. Have you seen it? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Baby girl. Pimp, you seen this? No. Child, it came out three it? years ago. Okay. Talk to me, Shug. Let me tell you. I'm not going to tell you the ending. Yeah. But think about, just think about the fear. Okay. Here, don't, here, put, don't take that off because I want I to I tell him about it. Think it's, about, you know, put yourself in this guy's shoes and tell me what you think would happen. Right. You ready for this? Yeah. Documentary came out in 2019. 
in the North <sighs> Atlantic Ocean, mm-hmm. in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. Heard of it. Like the middle yeah. of the freezing cold North Atlantic Ocean. There are groups of people yeah. that go down to the ocean floor. Okay? They go down to the ocean floor to what? To look for oil. They're drilling for oil. There's companies that do it. There's mining companies that do it. It's a whole big thing. The only way to make the initial drill to get the equipment down no there. No way, dude. No way. No you, way. Tell me someone sacrificed. What? Go you got to. Yeah. You got to. Okay. You have to. A man or woman or transgender has to go down there to the ocean floor and start to dig, dig the holes and do the things themselves. When, let me tell you how it is. So you're on a boat at the top of the water, like a fucking huge boat. Take a good look at you because you're on a boat. It drops you. You go into this little ball vessel thing. Like yeah. it looks like a little submarine or something. Submarine shit, thing. Like a little thing. You, it's three guys, two divers and one guy watching the divers. You have to stay in that thing, submerge underwater for 28 days to acclimate your body, I think, to the pressure of what it's going to feel like down there. After those 28 days, you then get released down. You're tethered to the boat. The, the little submarine thing is tethered to the boat and then you're tethered to the little submarine thing okay the boat is anchored in the middle of the rocky freezing cold north atlantic water heard of it you get down to the bottom of the ocean floor thousands and thousands and thousands of feet below the ocean surface where not even sunlight can get down the UN complete 1000 okay. percent darkness okay. which is what your fear is when you die right People have said, people who have done this job have said, there's sea monsters down there. Yeah. There's fish that nobody's ever seen that yes. they can only describe in sketches. Right. They even believe that there's, they hear noises down there. It plays a trick on you. It is less explored than space. We know space, right. literally, it, they know more about space than they do about the ocean floor because it is in, yeah. impossible right. to get down there. You have to be a highly trained diver yeah. to go down and do this. Okay? okay. So you're tethered to the boat, which is tethered to the other boat. One day, shout out tethering. Shout out tethering. One day, in I think it was 2011, there's a huge, like, perfect Mark Wahlberg storm on the ocean. Yeah. There's two guys down there on the ocean floor doing their thing. The only lifeline you have is the tether back to the boat that you cannot even see other than a little bullshit flash that you got on the front of your space helmet. You look like an astronaut. You're an underwater astronaut. On the front of your space helmet, you look like. It's it, you know it's it's crazy. You got a you got a flashlight. Who's the character from South Park? Cartman. You look like Cartman. You're Cartman down there with the little flashlight. Okay. Okay. And then what you do is you pull yourself up on the tether. I don't understand the reference to South Park, but continue. Isn't he in a spacesuit? Cartman. Isn't Cartman in a spacesuit? Kenny. In an episode. Kenny's maybe? in a spacesuit. Who's the South Park character in a spacesuit? The orange outfit you talking about? Isn't he in an orange? Isn't it a spacesuit? It's a hoodie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Take that part out. Yeah. Um, so so you're in like an astronaut outfit down there. The only way that you can it's get- It's only in the 26th season. Continue. The only way that you can get back there is to pull yourself up on a tether, you, you know, in the water, and then you get back into that little boat, and then it takes you back up to the other bigger boat. Sometime in 2010, there's two guys down there. One guy gets back safely. The other guy, the boat rocks so much, it loses its anchor, snaps from the other boat. The tether snaps off the guy- on the thing he is on the ocean floor tetherless alone on the ocean floor you have 15 minutes of oxygen supply because your oxygen is coming to the tether if you ever get snapped off that tether you have 15 minutes of oxygen supply the boat is now getting swept away they have no idea where he is they know he's alive standing alone on the bottom of the ocean floor this sounds like one of the most horrific things i've ever heard in my entire life in complete 1,000% darkness. All he hears is crushing sounds. All he sees is potential sea monsters. He can see, he can't even see his hand in front of him. After three minutes, his flashlight goes out. Now he's literally standing on the ocean floor in full 1,000% darkness. Okay, on the ocean floor. He's going to leave it all out there. He's going to leave it all out there. Who knows what he does? Who knows what he dances? And do you want to know what happens? Are, do you want me to tell the ending? 
oh, I want to watch this immediately. Do you want to watch it? Or do you want me to tell the ending? Oh, uh, tell me what to do. I don't know. Like You're, I was thinking about when we when, when we were done today. I'm going to watch it. Okay, so I won't tell you. No, I'm, no, just oh, uh, tell me what to do. How can we do this? How can we do? Well, it's a spoiler, so it's a spoiler. So if people are watching and they don't want to see it, then shut do you it want off. to see it or no? I want to see it now. You, I mean, how do I not want to see it? So you don't want. So you want me to tell you the end or no? Because it's wild what happens. All right. Will it ruin? Like, will I still watch a movie and my balls will be blown off? Despite you telling me the ending? I or think, do you think that I will be robbed of an experience with you shouting the ending out to me instead of experiencing it the way you, you experienced it? Because this is a big this was this was a big build to, to not to not pay off. And I'm I'm really you have my attention. XXX Tentacion. Shout out XXX Tentacion. Um I don't know what to do. I don't know if I if I tell you. Well, I mean, for the viewer at least, or the listener, I mean How much time do we have left in the episode? Um, a few more minutes. Okay, a few more minutes. I mean, Sal's so busy, you know. Sal- <laughs> <laughs> Pip, I'm surprised you want to hear it. No, I've heard it on the other show. Okay, all right. The last okay. breath. Okay, okay. Let me tell okay. you. Okay, you know what? Tell me, and if you don't want to know what it is now, skip okay. three minutes. Okay. I forgot what his name is. Chris something. Yeah. So, the thing starts. They're telling the story. They're showing pictures of him. Of course, you know, he can't survive that down there right because he's so far down and you have to regulate to come up yeah so he's talking about you know his wife's on you know talking about you know uh, you know whatever like obviously you know can't survive it right can i i don't want to interrupt you because i do want to hear this but you go down with one tether (laughs) like one thing goes wrong you're tetherless and that's where you find yourself? If there's like, how is there not a backup to the backup to the backup plan? How uh, is that not a it thing? It sounds like you at Shark Week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you not have eight tanks down there with you or something like that? Like, what? How do you do? Does he have a harpoon? I think, well, I think they did get sued by the National Tether Association, the okay. NTA. Yeah. They yeah. sued them. Yeah. And, and so now things have changed because of this incident. Things have changed. Now, the, the NTA ain't going to change. The NTA don't want to hear shit. If you're out, if you work for the National Tethering Association, write yeah. it. Hey babe pod at gmail.com. Tell us about what They're this is. It's too powerful of an organization. No matter what happens, the NTA is not going to do anything about the tethering. So, talking about you have. Yeah. So, when you get, because uh, auctions come to the tether, it's like, it's like your umbilical, umbilical cord. Just same umbilical cord you saw and look who's talking. Yeah. So, and in the, yeah, it's in the umbilical cord as we've read about in the ancient scripture. Yes. yes. So, so, <laughs> so the, the same umbilical cord from the Old Testament. Correct. So, auction's coming through. Tether, who the hell's calling me? Ortiz. Lists a lot, Ortiz. I don't know. So, so, you getting oxygen from that tether rips off. You now have two little bullshit oxygen canisters on each side of your belt buckle like little spray paint cans of oxygen okay what what do you do like you know that you can't survive it okay. so you but you know you have 15 minutes that's a crazy thing to think about right right you know you can't survive but right. you know you have 15 minutes left in the dark alone down there down there do you just sit with your thoughts well so what happened oh my is, god oh my god so what happened is you're down there with 15 minutes, right, of oxygen. The boat now has went so far off the grid. What they had to do, they did have his GPS location on, on his suit, so they knew where to recover his body. Shout out Garmin. Shout out Garmin. Shout out Tom Tom. Yeah. So what they did was they had, they had his GPS suit on his, they had his GPS location on his swimsuit. The boat goes all the way miles off course. It's being just thrown around in the ocean. It, They had to shut the boat down. They had to shut the boat down and reboot it to get back on, to get all the electrical stuff back on, to get the paneling back on. Shut it down, Mike. Shut it down. They send down. You know, I told you there was that little machine, that little machine that they were in, that little bubble machine that they were in. Well, that was tethered to him. That was tethered to him. So now the guy in the machine, because I told you there's one guy pulling there's one guy watching both divers the sec- first diver gets back the first pu- diver in the tethering i mean the machine get he doesn't stay to help no he they got it he doesn't even know he's like i'm back where's the other guy they're pulling up the tether it's a rip tether no oxygen it's just hissing because it's, it's just oxygen they're like oh my god so they send 
they send this boat thing back down because now the other two guys had to get into like the actual ship somehow, like whatever. They send this machine down. Like, you know that thing in the Titanic that like, what's it called? Jameson or you know that thing that like looks for stuff. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Like it's a robotic It's like a little camera? robotic submarine. You know what it's a, called? A drone? What? A drone submersive It's not drone. a drone. It's like, it's got a name. It's like Winston or something like that. They have that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So they go down blindly. They're like, we need to recover this man's body. Okay. 45 minutes later, 45 minutes later, this guy has oxygen for 15 minutes. 45 minutes later, they see him. They see his body. His tether got stuck to one of the oil rig machines. It could have been just floating into like a black abyss, right? They, he somehow, as luck would have it, you know, it's really important for his family. He's tethered. He's, he, it's his really tether- important for his family? No, to recover the body. Oh, of course, of course. His, 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 I didn't his, know. That was a discontinued thought. I didn't understand what you're saying. His tether, yeah. his tether is stuck to, the, to one of these oil rig machines. So they see him. So he didn't lose it. Is he sucking air from the tether? No. They see him. He's, he's, he's onto this oil rig machine. They, they get him. Now the machine gets him. That same guy that's pulling him up, you know, that, that, that was pulled up his tetherless, you know, his body with the snap tether, now goes down and they see him. The machine gets him. They start pulling him up. You know, they've already radioed that, you know, get paramedics down here. You know, it's been half an hour, 45 minutes left. They have the... the, the 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 uh things to pump his chest the f- they they have anything they can but they're like this but they, they also have a black bag because like this is a dead body they pull him up they get him in they take off his helmet to put on the oxygen mask they took off his helmet he goes what happened he was alive no alive for 45 minutes zero oxygen how's fully, that possible fully alive i have no idea but what he did say was what he did say was at the end of this all he was alive this whole time he said he remembers being in the blackness being in the blackness of of the ocean and then feeling the most sense of calm he's ever felt in his life and he was saying it's not that bad whatever death is i must have met it it is not that bad at all you just feel like you're as tired. He goes, you know when you're so tired when you just have to go to sleep and when you're falling asleep, it's the most peaceful thing ever? That's what death- yeah, if you go peacefully. If you go peacefully. But he wasn't peaceful. Two minutes before that, he was literally, he said he was thought he was going to get eaten alive by a monster. He was going to run out of oxygen. He was like just saying his goodbyes. Somehow, alive for 35 to 40 minutes, zero oxygen. He has no idea what happened literally survives go l- alive like fully alive on the documentary sits there's a scene where it shows him sitting down sitting down like the uh, uh, the camera's coming in and you just see him sit down and it's him it's this guy chris being like i survived it he survived it literally this was in 2019 survived that whole ordeal whole Gets amazing hit by a fucking car dead of covid this no, has been hey babe no no <laughs> no, 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 fully dead. No, died dead. No, I can't tell if you're joking. Dead. He died. Choked on a ham sandwich. No, how'd he die? No, I think he's still alive. Oh, oh he's okay. actually the guest right here. We got him on a hologram. Say hello to Chris, <laughs> dude. Are we? we are we? Did you? Did you really hate baby or no? Uh, yeah, no, right? Whatever you want to do. Well, we were, well, because then we could. If just, it would, if it would have been, if I would have timed it a little bit better, I would have said. I thought you were building up to it. This I has was, been hey babe. I was that his first I, words were, "This has been hey babe." Oh, I should have said yeah. that instead of saying I'm alive. You should have said, "This is hey babe." <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever. All right, but okay, is that still worth watching? But how, how do they? Like, what is their explanation? How could we not have all heard of this? Nobody knows at all. Nobody knows at all how he survived. Nobody has any idea. But what 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 was awesome is a week. What not even brain damage. One week later, he got back in that tank and went right back down to the ocean floor and has done no less than a hundred more dives since that incident. Wow. The last breath, un. 
unbelievable. Wow. He wasn't even like, I'll never do that again. I, I survived. I, I, pl- I was playing with fire. I was playing with water. I'll never do that again. I'll never do it again. He went down there and he said, put me into the abyss. Put me into the blackness. You can't scare oh, me. No, no, no. It's not for me. Not for me. Not for me. I want to find out his address. We'll send him some merch. Yeah, we'll send him a Kane Tanaka. Send him a Hey Babe shirt. Send him a Kane Tanaka shirt. He might outlive Kane. Easily could outlive Kane. Well, what is what is what is in the genetic composition of a person that can survive that and then still want to do it? Because uh, you know, I would give up. I would not do it again. Because I would imagine you have a lawsuit on your hands. You, Maybe not. Actually, yeah. you probably signed documents that you can't sue. You, I you probably out, can't because you say you want to dive to the ocean floor. You might die. Sign stupid. it away. Who, who, what possesses the person to even want to have that idea to do that? To do it and then to do it a hundred more times after that experience, harrowing. Yeah. I came out of Karate Kid in the theater with my dad when it was out. I crane kicked the brick wall on the side of the theater. I fucked up my toe so bad. I've never gotten to a crane kick formation again 43 years later. It's the exact <laughs> same thing as I, this guy from I, the I last part. God. <laughs> like, See, I won't crane kick again. You won't even crane kick. I won't crane kick again. And this guy's out here going to the ocean floor. Tell me when you see me crane kick formation. You never have. Never have it. Because after 1988 or whatever, 86, I never did it again. You guys, you'll do a crane kick on the Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still recording? No, it's over. 